Okay, in this lecture, we're going to talk about the explosion of the study of dog cognition. So uh, we've talked a lot about how dogs communicate uh, with humans using gestures in particular and how we think that might have to, uh, that dogs might actually understand uh, our communicative intentions. And we've talked about the origin of those abilities and how we think that might have evolved, these skills might have evolved during domestication, and of course, how coming to that realization then allowed us to see the evolutionary process uh, that drove that potential evolution that then allowed us to think about our own species and our close primate relatives and how their cognition may have evolved. But we're gonna change gears and now we're gonna really just focus on dog psychology. Uh, and this lecture is all about how dogs have a remarkable understanding of the social world. It's not just that they understand our gestures. Dogs are doing even more than that. And lots of researcher, researchers are asking lots of questions, not just about their social skills, but about all of dog cognition. While in this lecture we're going to fo focus on social skills, the next lecture we'll look at um, non-social problem solving in dogs. Uh, so for this lecture, uh, chapter six is going to be most relevant uh, and helpful. Uh, many of the examples uh, that we talk about uh, in this lecture are actually in chapter six as well. And Dognition, uh, it's going to be uh, the cunning games are going to be uh, really useful as a laboratory exercise uh, because they're very relevant to what we're going to be talking about. And reasoning, this is super relevant to what we're going to be talking because we're going to see where dogs potentially make some inferential reasoning, uh, use inferential reasoning, and you can do that with your own dog and see where your dog stands on some of the same uh, games using some of the same cognition we're going to talk about in this lecture. Okay, so since dogs have been recognized as being remarkable by science, not as something unremarkable that's, you know, just any old regular old mammal, but instead dogs have a set of social skills that seem to be similar to what we think are important in human infants, and that was the result of domestication potentially. Uh, there's been a whole explosion of research. People are asking all sorts of questions using a cognitive approach and an ecological approach to cognition to understand dogs. And that's really what's new is that people are learning about dogs using this cognitive approach, which really had not happened before. And these are the types of questions people are asking. Do dogs imitate? Are dogs capable of intentional deception? Uh, do they know what you uh, know and don't know? Uh, how do they navigate? Do they take shortcuts? Do they understand the causal properties of the world? Do, do they understand symbols like children do? And do breeds really differ? We have a sense that they do, but do they really differ cognitively? Um, so these are the types of questions that people are asking, and this is the type of work we'll focus on now. Uh, the really exciting part about this is a lot of the research we're going to be talking about from now on is being directly applied to trying to identify the best service dogs and the best military dogs so that we can increase the supply of these dogs doing these amazing jobs uh, and we can have more dogs helping more people. Uh, so the work is not just interesting if you just like dogs and you understand them better, the work is actually being applied to the real world. So with Oreo, my childhood dog, we didn't just do the gesture games. We actually decided to do uh, one more game that really set everything going in terms of thinking about dog social uh, cognition. And what we wanted to know is, you know, since Oreo was so good at using gestures and, and um, reading my gestures uh, or my gaze direction to find hidden food, could Oreo at the same time do the same thing for me? Could Oreo not only comprehend what I was saying, but could Oreo produce some type of information or some kind of signal to me to let me know where something was hidden uh, that he might want to eat? So we came up with a really simple game where he could show me where something was uh, that had been hidden. So what happened was uh, someone would go and hide food in one of three baskets. Oreo was there and was watching and I wasn't there. And then I would come out and I didn't know which basket uh, the food had been hidden in. Uh, and I would watch for 30 seconds or a minute and Oreo could just do nothing or Oreo could really actively try to um, show me, use showing behaviors like barking and looking in the direction where the food is or standing closest to where the food is to show me where uh, the hidden food was. And what we found was that Oreo was very good 
at uh, indicating where something was. Uh, it ended up that Daisy, my dog, my brother's other childhood dog, she actually never indicated anything. She just sat there and did nothing. Um, and so this is a great example where you know there's a lot of individual variability, and it's important to look at lots of dogs. And so two dogs isn't enough. Uh, and while Oreo's behavior was really interesting, luckily lots of people have been looking at this type of behavior, and especially Adam McClosey in Hungary has really examined the showing behavior in dogs and found lots of interesting. Um, uh, evidence that they do tend to, uh, see, or they do seem to be communicating intentionally, uh, and they do pay attention to whether you um, can see them or not, uh, um, also known as audience effects. Um, and they do all sorts of other things uh, involved in actually trying to communicate something to you. So if you have a dog, you're not necessarily surprised by this, but it just shows um, the flexibility that dogs potentially have. And you could be surprised as a dog owner because you could have a dog like Daisy uh, who never ever showed me anything. Uh, but what we learned from this is that dogs don't just comprehend what we're trying to tell them. They're not just passive, passively receiving information. They also are signaling us and trying to use us as tools uh, to help them solve a variety of problems. So that brings me to really one of the most interesting examples, and I have to say one of the most surprising examples in my whole career of studying animals. When I learned about what dogs were doing in terms of how they were learning words potentially, I was really blown away. So uh, let me tell you the story of um, the discovery of dogs fast mapping like human children. So human children uh, actually learn words incredibly rapidly. And from uh, one year until about 10 years of age, there is a massive increase in the uh, rapidity which, which uh, children learn words each day. Uh, it goes from, as this table says, to less than one word a day. Uh, and by the time you are um, eight to 10 years old, uh, kids are usually learning on average 12 words per day. I wish I could still learn 12 words per day. And when it's been estimated how many words people actually know, a six-year-old knows 10,000 words, whereas the average high schooler knows 60,000 words. So that's a lot of information to um, learn, and it's a lot to remember. But what's interesting isn't just the amount of memory that's required and the fact that kids have the ability to rapidly uh, remember the meaning of word, but what's interesting is how they figure out what the meaning of the words actually are. And this requires a uh, inference. So uh, fast mapping is actually uh, using inferential reasoning to understand what a label for an object actually is. And fast mapping allows humans to learn tens of thousands of words over our lifetime. And I think the key thing about fast mapping is exactly that. It's fast. It doesn't require a lot of repetition. Kids uh, or human children can be exposed to a word and uh, the associated object that it um, is uh, a label for in one or two interactions and they understand and will remember that that uh, um, label goes with that object.